So, welcome to my first Halloween tutorial. To start off, I'm just going to apply a base of foundation. This one is relatively tanned for myself, but I'm just going in with a lighter colour concealer under the eyes because we want to bring that area forward for this look. And then I'm going in with my normal shade of concealer everywhere else on blemishes, etc. To help brighten the area further, I'm just going to be baking with a loose translucent setting powder in all the places that I want to bring forward slightly and this is obviously going to help set all the liquids that we put down as well. I'm now taking a mixture of the warm and cool shades for the forehead. We all know Cleopatra is an Egyptian queen. So I want her to look very golden and chiselled of course. And here we're just going to start to create the effect of a rounded cheekbone with contour. So I'm making sure to use just the cool tone brown for this. And it does look a bit crazy, please don't do this if you're going out in broad daylight or just for every day. But it does look really great on photos to help change the structure of the face. And I also added more brightening powder on the sides of the nose to help simmer and also on the tops of the cheekbones to help bring them forward further. Moving on to the brows. I like to use an oily makeup remover on my brush to help sort of liquefy the dip brow a bit because it was a bit dried out. It is a makeup remover but I don't find it affects the longevity of the product in any way because the dip brow is waterproof if you didn't know that. I stuck with the general shape of my eyebrows, just made them slightly darker thicker and more defined than I usually would and I'm going in with concealer to carve out the eyebrows as well as prime the eyelids you know the drill I put a lot of powder underneath my eyes to catch any fallout that may happen during the process because we are about to go in heavy with some colorful eyeshadows as well as glitter and I don't want to risk that but to make things easier I'm using a blue eye pencil to sketch out where I'm going to cut the crease um, this is much easier than trying to go in straight in with eyeshadows. I winked the outer corner slightly and then continue to buff it upwards a little just so there's no harsh lines when it comes to putting eyeshadow on top. Speaking of which, now comes the scary moment. I used a small tapered fluffy brush just to blend blue eyeshadow on top of that line. And if I find I've taken it up too high, I just use a white or cream eyeshadow on the brow bone just to blend that out and making a mess as usual. I'm putting down a gold shimmery eyeshadow on the lid as a base so that you can't see anything under the glitter that we'll be putting down later. For this step I use the Jolie Beauty on Fleek palette. These are pressed glitters so they're super easy to use. I took the gold shade and just patted that all over the lid. You don't want to swipe or buff this product because it will fall down your face. And also won't apply the glitter properly. And this is how it looks once you've fully covered the lid. Once all that messy stuff is done you can wipe away the powder. And I like to spray my face with a setting spray, a hydrating one in particular, just to help the powders all sink in to the skin if that makes sense and it also helps my highlight go on better. I used a gold toned highlighter because you get the vibe I was going for. As for the eyeliner I began lining my eyes as I usually would. I also added some black to the waterline quickly. Moving on to create the ferro eyeliner, I used the symbol for the Eye of Horus as a reference photo for this. It's kind of hard to explain the shape so I'm just going to let you watch me do it or I would recommend going on Google and searching for the symbol and then using that as a reference photo. I added black eyeshadow to the lash line and buffed that out slightly just to make sure all the lower lashes were completely covered but I didn't want it to be super blown out because this isn't a modern day look by any means so I just went in with concealer and sharpened it up a bit. And I also added a little baby wing to the inner corners. Clearly that got everywhere because I just love making a mess. So once I cleaned that up I just added lashes and mascara before continuing with the symbol design underneath the eye. If you're in your youth but still have wrinkly under eyes like me you might want to tug at your under eye a bit just to help you get in there. I'm adding a little diamante detail to each eye. As for the lips, I lined them and filled them in with my go-to nude, which is MAC Velvet Teddy. This didn't exactly go with the look, so I put on top my gold highlighter and I feel like this was the perfect lip combo. 
Now that we have the Cleopatra inspired makeup done, we have to get into costumes. So I added my wig cap, my wig, um, and just kind of styled that a bit and sorted it out. I also added some gold jewellery pieces. I also used snake earrings because in Shakespeare's Antony and Cleopatra, she dies by getting bitten by a snake. Even her death was extra. Now that we've had a bit of a play about as Cleopatra, I was really feeling the character, I don't know why, but um, it's time to get mummified. So I'm just sketching out a basic shape to go off, I just deepened the eye sockets a bit, make the nose look like it's decomposing, added some teeth as well. And if you've seen any mummy type of movie, you know that the cheekbones are probably for me what stand out the most because they look so prominent and um, gross honestly. So I went and heated up my gelatin and while I'm waiting for that to cool down I added some creepy contacts. We're going to be using gelatin to form the structure of our mummified face as well as give some texture to the look. I have a recipe for this I will link down below. So I just put gelatin down and then put cotton on top of anywhere that I want to be protruding, shaped it and then added more gelatin on top just to seal that in and so we can be able to paint on top of it. I also added some stringy bits once the gelatin dried down a bit. Mummified skin is often very dry and cracked, so what can we put on our face that will harden and crack? A clay face mask. I really experimented with this as I didn't know how it was going to turn out, um, but I really liked the finished result, so I added that on top of the gelatin, and once it dried, I found it cracked better on the normal skin than it did on top of the gelatin, but it's fine, it still looks pretty cool in the end anyway. I powdered everything down just to make sure that nothing was still wet. Taking my alcohol activated paint palette, I went in with black just to add dimension anywhere where I felt like it needed it. So that's under the cheekbones, the nose, I made the temples look a bit more sunken in as well and obviously in between the teeth. And alcohol is obviously not safe around the eye area so we went in with eyeshadow just to shade in the eye sockets. Adding white alcohol activated paint to pale out the skin as well as bring emphasis to the texture and cracking that we have going on. I'm quickly just adding in some white to the teeth. I decided to incorporate some more V red tones just to make everything look more rotten and decayed. I also brought some of the paint down the neck. I added in some black eyeshadow because I felt like we lost some of the black that we put down during the paint job. And once I took a step back and looked at everything, I felt that the face was a bit disconnected from the hair. So I just buffed some black eyeshadow into my hairline just to help everything flow better. Don't forget to subscribe, like and comment. Okay, love you, bye.